want like to to create my own vision of this. Are you taking? Oh my God! No, I look horrible. Don't do that today. <laughs> we'll fix it. Don't worry. Oh, yeah, okay. We'll talk it up. <laughs> Thanks to Photoshop. Well, let me ask you actually something else along the lines. Is Feo short for Feodora? That's correct. Yes, I, it's a Balkan's name or a Russian name. Is Absolutely, how do you know? Because I used to be uh, work for someone who came from a Bulgarian family. Yeah, I don't know about the Bulgarian part, but I know that it comes from Old Greek, and it came into Russian language, and my grandma, my dad's mother, she... Her family used to marrying some kind of triangle from Russia to Denmark, Sweden, and Germany. It's a very old German family. So this is how the name came into her family, and it was her name. And um, I was supposed to be a boy, and then I ended up you know, coming out and being a girl, and it was just the best name my mom could come up with because she loved it. And then um, she was called I I my grandma because it was the first word I spoke and she she, she stroked my hand and I said I I for like you know like like this so she was called I and I was called Fia. Theodora is a very pretty name. I've always, always liked that. that. There's a great chocolate brand in Germany, uh -huh. Theodora, and uh -huh. they're just lovely. You should taste them. Oh, I definitely <laughs> yeah. will. Well, let me ask you a, a question about the film. We'll yeah. start on the film. We can always come back to yeah. some history, but. Um, the opening is very intriguing to me. I thought it was an excellent opening. And um, there are two questions. One is, in, one, why do you start with the end? But also, it is not the end. It's the penultimate scene of the end. So that's a very interesting narrative device. Can you talk about why you did that? I did that because um, what is going on in the film is sometimes not so surprising. You know, something. If you know those dynamics, you kind of would figure that might this might be the next step in the story. You know, when so you say the dynamics, since we're other people, like will not, the might dynamics not have seen the about film. honor killings, about those dynamics and family ha families having those issues, and I was not so much interested in the what, but in the how. How they how go about arriving at this how place. We, what is going on in those? You know, with those dynamics, what's going on in you know psychologically with this family in those characters how are they torn between whatever it is they are torn between and so it was more the how so I just thought it would be a, a good structure to to have like how, how do you call this parentheses parentheses if you make a parentheses and um, it just fitted it for me and but um, now it's interesting I still want to follow up with this because when you say, um, it, you still haven't explained why you think that parentheses, which is, it, it's a great narrative device mm. to begin mm. with an end. I think that's mm. always could mm. be a very, there are many psychological reasons why? to take the viewer mm. or the reader through that mm. end. Mm. And then I was very intrigued when I realized it wasn't actually mm. the end scene, mm. it was the penultimate mm. end scene. So you're, you have this in your mind all the time. I, I don't know. Should we give away what the scene is, or or not? It's a. It's the. As long as you don't give away the end. You think it's going to be? Yes. You think it's going to be? Um, well, it's about an honor killing. So obviously, you think the killing is is going to take place in this particular right. way. So why did you make? The, why did you feel that it needed a parenthesis? Was that a way of uh, softening the blows of the, the 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 horror of the story, or was it a way of? Pounding it harder. What what was it? It was probably more a way of pounding it harder, and as I said before, of um, making my point that it's for me. It's about the how, and another thing is that I think when you make a film, when you write a script, or when you paint a picture, or you sculpt, you know, you sculpt something, you have certain pictures, certain atmospheres. You just start out with something, and there was one particular image and um, and moment. Um, that was in my head very early on, which inspired me to in the writing of the whole script, and that's just something that's part of the end and the beginning. So, um, so that was something why I wanted to do that as well. So, I mean, you do it intuitively in a way. Absolutely. Know. So you did what is not atypical, as you say, in the art process. If you have one single something, right. and from that you span right. it, okay, that's right. very interesting. Yeah. Um, I also want to ask you why you, uh, at least in the English translation. It's the title is why we leave when we leave. I mean, sorry. Yeah. What's what I meant? When we but leave. But why we leave is an interesting question. Why we leave? Well. That's true. <laughs> We're desperate. When we leave, and I wondered why. Is you that the German 
Is that an accurate translation, that an accurate of, the translation? of the title? When we leave? Yes. No, because in German it's called Die Fremde, which would literally translate into The Stranger. But this doesn't grasp all those layers that um, you cover in the German language with um, Die Fremde. It just would grasp one, one, one meaning of the world of the word. So I thought it's just not correct because it's not just about the stranger. And die Fremde in German can mean a lot of things. It means if you migrate someplace, you go into die Fremde. This is the kind of like strange land you you, you go. Um, you feel fremd um, if you don't feel seen, if you don't feel protected, if you don't feel accepted. So it had a lot to do with all those different layers of the story and, and, and the spine also on a social level, on a, on a, on a like the macrocosmos of a society versus the microcosmos of family. So the Fremde got it all for me and then just taking that and translating to the stranger just didn't do it for me. So we were thinking uh, together with World Series about how you know how could we how could we name it what would be an appropriate name, and when we leave was um, just seemed the best one to grasp it. You know, get so it, my get most out of it. that that's interesting in itself. My question is why we why focus on that word we when we leave because that is a very unusual word to use in a title mm. and it's an unusual word to use in this title mm. of this particular because mm. part of I think part of the the message of the film, the impact of the film, is that it is very uh, shockingly not us. In other words, it's, it's oh, these are customs out there, and also it's a very shocking custom, honor, quote unquote, there's a real quote for you, honor killing, is a, a beyond barbaric, mm. I mean, you can't even, mm. words can't describe it. So the we is very interesting. Why did you choose that? Because it is about s so many people leaving something, you know, it's, it's, each member of the family would have had a chance to leave, to overcome, to step over their shadow, to step over their principle and overcome things just as much as I think that a majority, that this majority of a society, for example, like in Germany, could overcome certain things in a way to treat minorities in a different way and make it a little bit easier for them to arrive and make it therefore a little bit easier to grow and to really arrive and to let go of structures that are just really overcome and very archetypal and very archaic in a way, you know, very, very old. So I think it's, it's a we thing on so many different levels and I think reaching out to one another is always a we thing. I mean, I can reach out to you, but if you, you know, if you don't take the hand, it's not, it's not a we, it's a you or an I. So you're saying also then that I, I the film, I, because it doesn't really come across in the film in that sense, but you're talking about, in a sense, German culpability of keeping outsiders within a certain community, keeping them outside of being able to assimilate, integrate. Therefore, they perpetuate um, a, 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 these inward-looking archaic customs. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it just doesn't make it easier to let go of those Right. Mechanisms. That makes right. sense. You know, um, this is a story of a young woman who, uh, I don't know if it's an arranged marriage or it, it's an arranged mm -hmm. marriage and she goes back to Turkey with her husband, has a child, the husband is abusive, it's not working, and she comes back to, is it Berlin? That's correct. She goes back to Berlin mm -hmm. to the, to the uh, subculture there, which is the Turkish community. Uh, which is very insular in a way, and very much the customs of the old traditional Turkish mm. um, Muslim customs. Uh, and she is not welcomed back by her father because of the uh, shame that she's bringing to the family. And everyone in the family is affected by her choice to come home. Uh, is, that, that's, is that just the, the narrative line did I get anything wrong there? No, it's just that it's just it's it's one part of uh, a Turkish community living in Germany. Okay, it's you know, one part of very it. Conservative. But this is a very conservative, uh, traditional Muslim, uh, patriarchal situation with the, with the father at right. the head, and what troubles me, uh, not in a negative way about the film, but through the whole film and which I also identified with, was her so much wanting her family's support. Mm. 
Mm. And at every turn, she was tur it was turned away from her. Mm. And, and she has her child with her. And t even to the point where the men in the family, well, her older brother and her father and her mother all thinks that the child should be returned to her abusive husband. Mm. Now, um, that dynamic of wanting the family's acceptance is universal. Exactly. You know, it's, it, this is a story about the Turkish community, but I can think of a number of other instances where that whatever happens in that family dynamic, she has, not, she has left and come back, but she wants to stay in the family dynamic. Absolutely. And that to me is what this core of the story is about and why it is not just a film about honor killing, it's about being trapped in tradition even when you rebel. Absolutely. Thank you, because this has been a call, and that is why so, I want, this is why I wanted to tell this story. And I was like, you choose, you choose the world in which you set those feelings and those emotions and those dynamics, but um, so I So it's not a politically correct film. Well, you know, p politically correct films, I know. It's not what, you know. Wait, wait, I'd like to jump in here and ask you, why, why are you s saying that? Well, because I think that, that when you describe it as a film about honor killing, it's certain things come to mind uh, that are real. And what I think, the, why this film is so um, powerful is that this human story of the daughter, it could be the prodigal son. It is the prodigal daughter, in a way, coming home and wanting her family, who does love her. Absolutely. You know, and I think you, you can see that. Yes. You know? and, and, and and yet, no matter how she's rejected, she doesn't leave again. You know, she goes away, but she comes back. And, and so, therefore, she is complicit in some ways in continuing the tradition which she's trying to reject. Is that a way to talk about it? Because also she can't overcome what is so inherent to all of us, which is like the strongest bonds we have. Our, our family, th those are the strongest bonds that kind of like, what's the English word, that just, you know, determine the way we function, you know, and I think it's very, it's a universal thing that we need the loyalty and the love of our family, regardless if we function in a way that they think we should function. I think it's about unconditional love, it's about being able to live a self-determined life, you know, having a profession you want to have or live in a way you would like to live without losing the love of your family and I think that's just something we all know to a certain extent in all different kinds and shadows and grades of gray. You know? We had an American so writer named Thomas Wolfe who says you can't go home again. A very, a very long book mm -hmm. and in a sense, uh, in particularly in, in our adolescence collectively when we're reading these kinds of, of books uh, it's a message to young people mm. about, you know, not to be romantic. Mm. Once you're outside, mm. it changes everything. Mm. And, and the, the, the thing that, that also troubled me in a, in a conf confrontational way, which is why your film works so well for me, is the child uh, becomes secondary. Mm. It's almost a pawn in the family. But that child is exposed to all of the, the stress and contradictions and, and violence, uh, psychic violence, emotional violence uh, that goes on in this family. And how old is it? Maybe four, three? Four? Five. Five. So, you know, and, and he loves his mother. His mother is who he knows. But the, the child becomes more of a pawn that she won't give up. But she's exposing to all of this uh, early, awful family situation. Why did you have it that way? What's pawn? Uh, it, um, they're all struggling over the child, a, yeah. little, a little object yeah. that they all want. Yeah. You know, and, and she's the mother, and she's definitely not going to give up the child. Absolutely. And and the father wants. And the father says you have to give the child to the husband. Mm. Mm. So that's what is done. It's mm. his child mm. that the mother is not mm. seeing. Mm. As, as her child. But that's a problem, you see, because this is what, what's going on often in, in, in those dynamics is that, and she would have had it probably, or it could have been a lot easier for her if, if the child would have been a daughter, for example, because then a daughter would have been just a horror as the mom is one, but once it's a boy, you know, 
um, there's a great need to, to, to get back the boy and the son and to raise him in the way you want to raise him. And I, I, the question was why, why is the child in the story or why, why is the child the pond? Right, mm -hmm. pawn, because pawn, as in a chess, pawn. little chess piece, the little uh -huh. teeniest chess piece is a pawn. Oh, a pawn! The thing you just ah, you okay. use a yeah. little soldier is a pawn, a pawn. in an army okay. in a war, yeah. that kind of thing. I think the child is the most important. It, it's the most. It's the biggest treasure for everybody, mm -hmm. portrayed in a story, in a way. And the child is the future. Nobody wants to give up on the future. And in a way, what what goes on is, you know, um, what's trying to be preserved, kind of the system kills itself, it eats up itself. I mean, you try to preserve certain tradition or archaic tradition for the future generation. But if this are, or these are dynamics that are not healthy, you, you, you kill the future, mm -hmm. basically. Very interesting. Do you... Um you, can you talk a little bit about, it seemed to me that you use silence in a very interesting way throughout the film. There's there's dialogue, of course, but there's a lot of use of silence. The, the, uh, I, my memory is the, well, certainly the opening is silent, which is very, very effective. Mm -hmm. And then there's a long, she travels, and then there's a lot of silence there, and silence throughout. And it seemed to me that you used it as a structuring device. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that? Well, first of all, I don't like films where, where everything's just in the dialogue. I think, I mean, like like as now, most of the time we're communicating in, um, in a non-verbal way. And I think it's about, you know, looks and moments and this is where the real stuff is going on, I think. And um, I think it's important to have that in a film, just to get closer to the characters, and, you know, kind of be, be with them and, and um, offer to the viewer a look into the soul of people um, and show, show their, you know, how, how much they are torn in the dynamics um, told in the film. And I also think, just as you said, it's, it's a good device to, to structure. So it's, it's been for various reasons, and I think it's just, it, I, I need it for rhythm. It's a rhythm thing. I mean, it's just something that, um, it's, it's those moments in between that I find so interesting and that, that trigger me when I look at, watch films and uh, what, what I watch out in conversations, you know. Moments in between. There's another structuring device that's visual, seems to me, which is the use of black. Mm. Um, but it's 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 not a fade out. It's it's just a, it's almost like the scene just turns, mm. becomes black, mm. and then cuts. It's, it's a, Hitchcock used mm. black mm. wonderfully like that. Mm. But yours are shorter. I don't shorter. like too many fade outs. No, no, yeah. no. I these aren't fade outs. These are yeah. these are almost frames. Yeah, and, exactly. Or bars between. Exactly. So w yeah, do you want to talk about that? Because it's a, it's again. W w what seems to me, what you're saying is that you're you're trying to use um, sort of an unconscious draw mm. to draw us in mm. uh, to a, a way of identifying or sympathizing mm. or understanding. Mm. So th these black visuals, what did you? Because it's like I wanted it to be like it. it that's so hard for me to say in English in in a, in a way that you know if you don't if you don't just try. It, it's hard. Just try. I, I try. Um, I wanted it to be like I had my my felt structure, which is you know you go on a roller coaster, and then at the end you just you know like do like this. Um, that's your plot structure. That's my plot right. structure. Um, there's different levels, of course, because there's this this um, Greek tragedy thing to it and the catharsis to it on another level. But I wanted to be able to open rooms, emotional rooms and windows and I just think that you dive into something and you're there for a moment and then you come back and you, you know, there's the next moment and you, you, can, you pulse, it's like a heartbeat. Mm. You're there and you're gone and you're there and you're gone. And um, it's also, um, of course, I'm telling a story about a family, so it's not, you know, it's not just from one perspective, not just from one point of view, so it seemed important for me to, to be with you and then be another character. Also, of course, there is this main perspective, which is which is uh, Uma, of course, the main protagonist. But it was important to me that, that you feel close to all the other characters and kind of like feel feel the family structure. Did this make any sense in English? Cause no, it makes very hard to say it in English for me very well. not a native speaker. So I think is it was that something that you. Um, how did you conceive of that, both of those structuring devices? Was was there something that influenced you particularly, or you thought this through very uh, very much ahead of time, or it evolved as you were making the film, or it evolved in the editing process? I think, no, it evolved um, 
after I, I did a long I did just a very long term of research and uh, I mean of course you, you do research in a very factual way you have to know the world you're portraying so it took me like two years to do that and then at the same time you work on a different level you 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 start creating which you just you know it's like it's like you get in all the stuff and it just breathes within yourself and you get a feeling for so it's it's, it's I think it's always a mixture between a very clear analytical um, analytical way of structuring yeah. things and also an intuitive way you just you just have a feeling how th how it has to work and this is this is what I put in a script so um, I had a very particular feeling about how the structure and the rhythm should be and would be and I think that's always a mixture between thinking about it in a very analytical way and combining that with, with just what I would call an intuition. I mean, you, you, of course, and then you realize, why did I do this? Is this working? And then you, you, know, you go back and you question it and you try other things. And you, you just, I don't know, that, that's so hard to explain. It's just like painting. I mean, it's like you, you kind of like, um, you have a feeling for it. I think you've explained it very well. Go ahead. I was uh, quite taken with the performances. Um, you're a lead actor who plays the, the central character, Uma, uh, was so believable. But I was also quite taken with the mother. And the mother, uh, I kept thinking of Iranian kinds of films, mm. or neo-realism in Italy, because so much of what she did was not in words. Mm. It was in her, uh, her, her face, mm -hmm. uh, and the emotions, that, the conflict that, that you could see she was going through. She loved her daughter. Mm but she had to honor mm. her husband. Mm. Her husband was the head of mm. the family. And that, um, and it was about a grandchild also. Mm. And the uh, economy of the script in those moments really worked cinematically. And, and I wondered how you cast that part, the mother, and how you spoke with the actor, uh, because her role, more than anyone else, is nonverbal. I cast her by looking at a tremendous amount of Turkish films for a long time and then narrowed it down to, let's say, it was, I think, like 12 very, very, I think, talented actresses from Turkey uh, I wanted to meet. So I flew to Istanbul and I, I, I met with them and I also met with Daria and um, we had, um, and um, we, we sat down and uh, talked about my vision of the story and of the film. And um, I realized that, that she was just somebody I, I could connect with really well. And then I, I left the script. I had a Turkish translation of the German written script. And then she read it until the next day. And then we met again and sat down and we talked about her part and about the script. And I, she just wanted to do the film so much. I mean, she, she's one of those women you can't silence her. I mean, she's a very political person. And she's a very intuitive person. She's a great actress, and um, you know you. So she's a well-known actress in Turkey. She's well known in art house films in Turkey. Um, she's not like the big commercial yeah. star, but people, you know, being interested in cinema know her for a long time. So the Iranian films, though, did, did, are they any influence on you? I couldn't really name specific influences. I think it's it's all. I'm al I'm always having a hard time when people ask me like, what did influence you, or what is your favorite film, or what is because it's just it's just such a broad thing. It's my uh, what did influence me, for example, definitely what I can single out is like uh, Mike Lee and his work and um, the way he um, he's working with actors or um, you know people. A lot of those directors are working on a Meissner-based technique in some way. That's just something, that's that's the approach that works best for me. So, um, and uh, Daria is just somebody, I mean, she's very she's very much in the moment. She's a not, not bullshit person and she has a very concrete feeling about a fake and a true moment. And um, working with her is just a pleasure because we often, I, I directed her often in a way where I would just tell her a story to convey a feeling or an atmosphere. Mm -hmm. um, just as much as you do basic directing work, we have very accurate, you know, actions and wantings and needs and, and all that kind of stuff. But that's not something. I mean, that's basic for an actor like her. You said she was a very political. She was very political, um, and 
uh, and the your lead actor had has said in in the Q and A's I, I've seen her that this this subject is very very important to her as a Turkish woman, and yet. Um, a lot of Turkish people are not going to want you to tell this story, and not particularly will not want you, an outsider, to tell this story. And I wonder how you steel yourself and explain yourself about why you feel that you can tell this story. I think you can tell any story, um, I wouldn't say as an artist, but basically as a person trying to communicate something, um, as long as you know what you're talking about. So I don't have to justify anything. I can just honestly say, this is my amount of research. This is my amount of shared reality by people who have been caught up in those dynamics, women and men, families and young women in Turkey, in Germany. This is where I met people over a long period of time. And I think uh, if as long as you know what you tell, you, you have to at least know. You have to le at least know what the hell you're talking about if you set things in a certain setting. But that's as much as explaining as I would do. Because as you said in the beginning, I think it's about a universal core. That, um, I mean, you know, having a French journalist speaking to me in, in Crete like two weeks ago, and after we, we finished the interview, and she turned off the microphone and she said, You know what, I want to thank you for this film so much because I'm. Um, and she was my age, she was like probably in the end of her thirties and, and she said, um, I have a very, very Catholic dad and um, I, I have two young sons and I got married pretty young and I wanted to leave my husband and um, I actually did leave my husband with my two sons and ever since my father's not talking to me and I just saw my father on screen every time I looked up there and it, it just, all those feelings came up so, mm. and I think that's that's just one of many stories where you see it's not you know it's not about a specific culture not it's not only about a specific religion or cultural background it's just something that we all know and I mean there are honor killings for example if you if you bring it down to an honor killing level in Catholic Romania you know so it's not it's also not a thing you can you can um, kind of like boil down to an Islamic uh, context um, at all because honor killings are just so much older, those dynamics are so much older than all our big religions are. And um, so I don't think, I haven't had, I haven't had the, the need to explain myself in Turkey in so far as that Turkey was the first country that bought the film um, one day before we had the world premiere at the Berlinale, which made me extremely happy because of what you asked. And um, we were taken on by the Istanbul Film Festival, and it was just received really well, and people are very touched. And I can just tell that those viewers um, in Germany who, have, who bring in this background um, react very emotional because I think it's it's there's a culture of dealing in a very honest and open way with emotions. There is a culture uh, around the world, you mean? Mm, or yeah, or especially in, in, in the Turkish culture. Uh -huh. They're not afraid of emotions, you know. It's also the language is very, you know, it's full of, of proverbs, full of pictures, full of feelings, full of pictures for feelings. It's mm -hmm. just very rich. It's emotionally very, very rich. And um, so it is, there's a tradition of showing very openly how you feel in a way also. And they, that's something that communicates if they see it on screen. And it, that's, I mean, if you look at Turkish films, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's mm -hmm. just, they're not afraid of seeing emotion on screen, which sometimes, for example, with certain, let's say, German films or mid-European films, there's just another way of dealing with emotion. It's just there, you sometimes even have the impression people are scared of evoking emotion, even certain, you know, when you're very formal and you have a specific way of dealing things in a cinematic way that is very, you know, boiled down to, f to formalism. Um, this is not what Wayne Relief is, so it's probably... From the style, it's pretty close to, to what, what they like to watch. We have to wrap up because they need to go off quickly, evidently. Yeah. Um, I do, so. did, do you know Turkish then? You know, you learned I it in, did you spend time in Turkey? I spent time in Turkey, but um, the m I learned Turkish actually um, a lot of months before we started shooting each hour one day uh, in the morning. And um, the private teacher came. I uh, know, of course, because, because um, parts of my family speak Turkish. So, But it was 
it wasn't good enough to really have like a decent conversation. So I took on uh, lessons and then I learned my script by heart and I worked on a script with somebody who was really, really good at translating. He's like one of the best simultaneously, do you say simultaneous mm -hmm. translators? Simultaneous. Simultaneous translators in Germany and he's doing a lot of um, book travels with Orhan Pamuk or if Erdogan comes to Germany, like the political level, he will translate for them. And he's he also comes from fiat theater interestingly mm -hmm. enough so he has a really great way of dealing with language and he helped me translate those dialogue uh, lines in Turkish so that it's really on the spot and not just you know some kind of trans mm. literal translation and of course you know every single word of your script before you will start working which is necessary and then you, you, you see what you adjust or what, what comes up in the rehearsal but um, I learned a lot through the film, obviously, and I, I thought it was very enriching to, to be able to direct in two languages that are so different. It's and so to also set exactly, you know, work on those points where I say, here is the use of um, Turkish language and here is the use of German language, because this is an issue in families. I mean, it's like, in Germany it's a little bit um, like this, that often children talk to their parents in Turkish while they talk with their siblings uh, in, Germ in German. And it just says something when you use Turkish or when you use German. Yes, it's it, very it, interesting. It tells the story, so it's set on purpose. It's basically. also very interesting that you have um, the ability. You know, it's very unusual for the director to be able to be hands on at the at the um, level of the uh, subtitles. And also yeah. to to have we are to small understand <laughs> no, so but I mean, yeah, no, to understand the, I mean. the the nuances of language and how it represents. The, the the lusciousness of a language or its dryness or its its use of syntax is so it's so untranslatable but it's so unbelievably crucial it's so, so interesting crucial to hear you about, talk you know, about it's it it's so crucial to each character and to to the overall setting of a story i mean it just the, the use of language is, is one of the most important things i think when you when you create i mean not a, it, it's it's crucial if you create a character i mean how does he or she use language and which accent is it, and, and what's the syntax, and what's the rhythm, and you know, all this it just tells a lot. Not just only in a, in a, in a, a quote of foreign languages, or but also just to, to, to have that ear for how any kind of character speaks in right. any language right. to, to convey what is really going on. Yeah, and I think when you see that in a script. Yeah, right. it's it, and I've, that's what you look for in a script when you when you act. You know, when you you look at is is there has there been thinking about this, is there is this a script writer who has a feeling for this? And it's just something I was used to and I often missed. And uh, it lacked this quality and it's something you bring on board then yourself. But obviously it's a nice thing to, to, to have a ground there and then work from there. But um, I just think it's important. Mm -hmm. Very. I'll leave you with the last question. Well, I'm sorry we can't talk more today. <laughs> I hope we can in the I'll future. I'll be back. <laughs> because of the whole question of multiculturalism and how the the law works around trying to respect these different cultures mm. when a crime happens. And in this particular crime, it's usually a female who, who is, whose life is lost. Uh, not always, but usually. And, and I also wanted to talk to you about the role of shame mm. in the family structure mm. at a very early age and how that plays out as the children grow up. Mm. Because understanding her desire to repeatedly go back to a place of pain um, is one of the, 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 to me, the most powerful themes in your film, and the one that confronts the audience. Mm. And uh, but we can't do it today. Um, we we have to do it over the phone. Yeah, yes. we can do it over the phone. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd love to. Yes, that'd be great. But, yeah. But I, I just want to. You can see. Yeah. Where Julia's nodding. I've got to. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. Yeah. It's I nice just wanted to, uh, you know. Uh, this is a film festival, and we see lots of different films and lots of challenging films, and then the ones that bubble up and, and stay with you past the two hours that you're with because you're off doing something else, the one that you take home and think about and you tell your friends about, that to me is a successful festival film, and, 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 this, and your film is one of those films, so it's, it's, uh, I'm, I hope that the people that listen to this will have the opportunity to see this film and talk about it, because it is not an entertainment. It's a very provocative uh, piece that is not simple. Did you? Is that the way you wanted to leave the audience? You must you guys, yeah, mm -hmm. leave, you know, let, let people leave with question marks and the, the, and the urge or the need to talk, mm -hmm. to keep up a dialogue. Because mm -hmm. I think that's just what, what, what's needed.
When is it going to open here in New York, do you know? Well, help us open it. You don't have uh, a distributor? They're in talks, but no deal yet sealed. I no think with order. the prize you'll, you'll get a deal, I'm sure. It would be great. It would yeah. be just great. I mean, I would love to. Of, have to film here. of course, and, and it will. Back. I'm sure it will. Actually, I'm sure. Was there any television money in this in your production budget? Yeah, if you find in in, in, in do you know about German finance structure? Yeah, you do, Colin. It's so great to talk to you because it's you're actually talking about film and not only about politics. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, uh, we, we you you almost can't do it without some television money in there. I mean, you have to have those state fund monies, and then you have to have a certain amount of television broadcasting stations being in there in order to be able to get those fund monies. I mean, there there are systems for small budget of films where you can go without without TV money, but it just makes sense to have it. We had wonderful partners. I mean, we just uh, I, I feel so fortunate because they were the best partners I could have had. I think. You, have you ever had tea with Margarita Von Trotta? I, if I met her? Have you had tea with her and talked No, I never had tea with her, but I would love to. <laughs> yeah. We had she's a brilliant one. Yeah. yeah. No, I, w I would love to have tea. <laughs> Maybe we should have all of us. Oh, I wish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On your beautiful yeah, terrace That would here. be great. That would be great. <laughs> is she someone whose work has influenced you? I mean, absolutely also the sense that she's a woman, and it's just not an awful lot of women filmmakers mm. in the world. It's likely becoming more and more, but it's not there, too many. There are actually quite a few. It's just they're very, very, very unknown. Yeah. It's quite amazing. And you I would like to know why do you think this is... Are you asking me? Yeah, I'm asking you. I think it's gender politics, for sure. Mm. Absolutely. I mean, mm. uh, Catherine Bigelow is a kind of example, I mean, mm. in the sense that she has made blockbuster films mm. for years that mm. are very talented and Absolutely. totally fabulous, mm. but certainly was not uh, the name that anyone knew until this Academy Award. But, I mm. mean, you can... You can walk by film posters, and it's a woman director, woman director, woman director. And it's just a day I'm not Even no Boys Don't Cry, which was Absolutely. talked about for Absolutely. a decade. How right. many people could name the director? Very mm. few. Mm. And then she Kimberly did... Kimberly Pierce. Kimberly mm. Pierce, but mm. she did Stop Loss, which was another Iraq film. Exactly. Around I've never seen this subject. one, but... No, yeah, nobody had died yeah. to death. I'm not even sure if it was released in Germany. I'm not sure. But it's that's part of it's it's a strange you know po it's a stra strange politics strange. or politics yeah. or politics and I mm. think it doesn't it's not mm. a matter of you know mm. crying about it specifically but it's certainly you just if people will favor what mm. they feel more comfortable mm. with I think that is mm. often the case mm. Mm. and one of the strengths of Absolutely, this yeah. mm. one of the strengths of this mm. year's Tribeca Film Festival and I could go on and on about the p films I don't like but there are so many women directors. Mm. Uh, with the best films at the festival, mm. you know, cool. uh, mm. Snap, your mm. films, the documentaries, uh, Auber, I mean, really mm. challenging pieces mm. of work, mm. and, uh, and and that's what not all has bubbled up above all the others, and, mm. uh, and whatever I want to say about Tribeca Film Festival, it probably has had better representation of women film directors than, say, Sundance this year had, mm. or the New York Film mm. Festival, so I mean, mm. I think it's really... Uh, uh, pretty significant, and they're in the quality of the work mm. and how different the films mm. are. You know uh, mm. that uh, they're 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 you know we are, that that old saying. Well, are they women directors or are they directors that are women? Mm. Well, they're both. they're both. Exactly, and I mean I remember my my, my like my cast being asked a couple of times like was it different to work with a woman? And I think it's just and, and luckily I said well that that's that's kind of a weird question because or was it better or was it worse? I mean it's like. It depends on people, you know. Why are why are those questions still coming up? I think it's a little bit ridiculous at the end of the day because it's like, what's it like to be directed by you or by you? I mean, that would be a question because we are. But what else? Why do we define it still by gender? You know, it's not about how loud I can scream on set, right? It's also, so. but it's it's there are certain uh, groups that have been ex experienced extreme prejudice. Mm. That no one would dare say, you know, what was mm. it like to be directed by a Jew? No one would say yeah, that, and right. no one would say, what yeah. was it like to be yeah. directed by a gay man? That would or be by a little Spike bit. Lee, or, you know, yeah, whatever, you know, yeah, yeah. That, and so yeah. it's there's certain things you can say, and there's certain things you can't say, and that kind of thing. But I would like to ask you that question, though, which I I think is a very interesting question, that's open ended, which is, do you think a woman brings a different um, something different to a given project, in this case, let's say, a, a film. Do you think there uh, uh, there's a different perspective, a different eye, certain things show up that would, or are emphasized or are done in different ways? 
No, because I don't know all the women and the men on the planet, so I would I would find it hard to generalize. Um, I just think we are very, how do you say, endurable. I mean, I think durable, endurable. I mean, we strong. have like strong, and our ability <laughs> to, uh, to 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 just stick it through. But true. it's just you know very uh, very big, I think. But I would never dare to say this is something men don't have. I mean, so I think. And I wouldn't say there's like men who look at emotions in a different way or deal with, with um, because there's just too many examples of 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 this um, negating this. You know, there's just a lot of ma- not a lot, but there are some male directors who absolutely are able to tell female characters in a very sensitive way. I think and um, and 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 portray um, and really portray women and honor women and and, and create parts that. Um, are full, full-bodied, three-dimensional, and not just instruments in, in conveying whatever story it is or male character, which is then the lead. So I think um, there's just as men who can do it as well. So I think it's hard to say it's different. I it's different. Of, of I wouldn't violence. say it's better, or it's, it's just it might. It, it, it is. I mean different. different. I don't mean better or worse. Yeah, it's I, just different. Different. Yeah. I just mean different. Yeah. I just mean different. Yeah. I think that, that yeah. the, the question of violence, though, and how violence is used by women. Uh, when the moment requires, when it is, when the narrative requires violence, I think there is a difference uh, mm. with the way a woman director, at least in my experience, approaches violence in the way many men, uh, uh, and the man who doesn't approach it in the traditional way is unusual. Mm. That would stand out. Mm-hmm. You know? um, in a way how you show it. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, and I think that there yeah, are, and this is not yeah. so much, I don't want to call it gender politics, but I think it's sensibility. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I think when a man a, a man telling the story in your movie, I think would have told it differently. I really do. Mm. I think the, uh, the to under to appreciate how that mother feels about mm. her child and how she feels mm. about her family. Mm. Um, uh, I just I don't, maybe I'm wrong, but I think that the fact that that the, when I looked and realized it was a woman that directed it, it made sense to me. Mm. If it had been a mm. man and mm. it was done in the same mm. beautiful way that your film mm. is done, um, I don't think I would have thought about it that mm. much. Like I would have mm. accepted it, but I. It confirmed to me, uh, and I and I, you know, it's hard to walk through this discussion because it doesn't mean that one is better than the other. It's just different. Uh, but it's different. And, mm. uh, and, and, and I also think, like, I also think, like, since since you know, you choose to tell a specific story in a specific way, which is inherent to how you can and want to tell the story. Mm. So obviously. If you write, if you write scripts for yourself, and it's not something that comes to you, but in general, filmmaking is just a very, very, very personal mm-hmm. thing. So it's inherent in the whole system, if you think of it that way, that you could feel it's done by a woman because it's it's a very personal story. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, it's you know, it's how um, you have those moments with a mom or with a dad as a woman, as a daughter. So I think it's, it's, it's something that's, in German you would say, system inherent or system co- consistent. Do you say do you, is there a word like this? Consistent. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the whole construction of, you know, of um, that filmmaking, that making films is personal, so you always do them in a way that are very close to you. Of course. And that's, that's art why in general. Yeah. Yeah, that's art. And I think you have explained it actually in many times throughout this conversation in a very interesting and, and, and you've explained yourself very well. well <laughs> you thank have. You know what, you feel a little bit, how do you say, amput- amputated? Yeah. Amputated. Yeah. Amputated, thank you, because I can't use language, I mean my English is not as good as my German obviously, so it's just I feel a little bit amputated in not being able to really, you know, nail things on a point, but I'm working on it. I think you did very well. <laughs> anyway, we hope to talk, should we take a telephone yeah, or yeah, email yeah. now? Let yeah, me take a you. Time. It's been lovely talking to you. Mm. It's been really wonderful Sorry, to talk to you, and congratulations.